of October 3rd, 2019 is now in session. The first order of business is to approve the minutes from the September 12th, 2019 meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Any modifications or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Um, <laughs> Thanks, too. It's best to abstain just to be safe. I will second that. Okay. If that's here. It's going to abstain. All those in favor, say aye. 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 I have to abstain because I wasn't here. Never done that, ever. Uh, okay, the minutes are officially adopted. The second order of business is to adopt the resolutions from the September 12, 2019 meeting. Is there a motion to uh, so moved. adopt the resolutions? Second. Second. Any modifications of discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The resolutions are officially adopted. The board will now conduct the public hearings on today's agenda. The way we work it here is that the applicant or the applicant's representative will state the reasons for the requested variance and present any material or documentation which is to be consider considered regarding the proposal. Next persons wishing to speak in favor of the proposal will be given the opportunity to address the board. Then persons who wish to speak in opposition will be allowed to address the board. Finally, the applicant or a representative will be given the option to make any closing arguments or comments to the board. Following the public hearings this afternoon, the board may make decisions on each application heard. The board may also decide to hold its decision until the next public hearing. If the hearing is closed, no additional information will be allowed into the record except for the information that the board may request. That information will be available for public review at the Zoning Office and City Hall Commons. Uh, anybody who comes up to speak, and everybody's welcome to speak, uh, must state their name and address before they commence. Uh, with that, staff will now introduce the first application. Good afternoon. Today's uh, first public hearing is I-1925. It's a continuation from September 12th, 2019. It's an interpretation of proposed uses and enumeration, enumerated uses within a local business class A. Um, for industries also permitted, uh, the petitioner is Salina First LLC. Um, we had requested a form Yes, more information uh, related to the floor plan affected essentially whether an interpretation is needed um, and specifically to for which um, which interpretations of the law. So right, the focus based on the new four floor plans is on that dental um, office use, that's yeah. dental laboratory. Do we know use. what page is that? Um, is that in our agenda? What page? I'm sorry, what was the question? What page? It's on 17, maybe page 30, 38, 36. Yeah, in here, yes. Sure, may I approach? I have some um, photographs and things that might oh, be helpful. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Brody Smith. I'm an attorney at Bonshenik and King, and I rep represent the applicant, um, Salina First LLC. What's your address, please? My address is 1 Lincoln Center, Syracuse, New York, 13202. So if anyone uh, doesn't have the letter in front of them, I brought extra copies of that. I think we have it in here. The August 19th letter? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's in our packet. So, yeah. yeah. And then also, I've brought some photographs just to orient you with the site. And sometimes it's helpful to have those. Yeah. Thank you. 
So these are from the direction of South Samoa Street, looking at the property, which is a big lot. The left side of your picture is north, and the right side of the photograph is south. Go copy the letter. Save me from yes. jumping around. In your pick, uh, yes, it is. And then the other, the only the other photograph, just for additional perspective, that I brought is um, same thing, only from the direction of the south. So you can see, just want to be able to see what the neighborhood's like. The neighborhood uses the uh, neighboring what is the development that sort of thing. On these photographs, could you explain to us what buildings will be demolished? What, what buildings will be demolished? Um, well, the so looking at the photograph, um, I think this is the best way to look at it. The, the, this vegetation will be removed, but there are no structures on the property now. This church will remain. This is a church that will remain, and this is a neighboring property, which is sort of dilapidated. So the answer is nothing will be demolished. No, no structures. Staff, pictures. Yes. Please. Yeah. 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 I realized that a, a presentation was made at the last meeting. I'll try to go through it again as efficiently as possible since I know some of you have heard it already. I want to go through some of the same things because I know there's some people who weren't here before. Um, if you have any questions or observations, please don't hesitate to interrupt me. So this is located at uh, 1081 South Salina Street. It is a vacant property. It is. Um, neighbor to the south by the New Jerusalem Baptist Church. That was the church we were just referring to in the photograph. There's a community center in the area. There's parking lots, vacant land. The nearest residential use is a group home located to the north and the east uh, across Montgomery Street. It's zoned Local Business District A. The purpose of Local Business District A as set forth in the statute is to permit the intensive development of land for mixed residential retail service and certain industrial uses. Um, these are the type of uh, uses that require frequent access, is what the intention is. And the, um, the, there's, there's, there's a list of, of potential industrial uses. And it specifies in the purpose section of the zoning code that the industrial and, and uh, retail and commercial uses are the types that ought to be have operating characteristics that are not hazardous, obnoxious, deleterious, or a nuisance. There are specific permitted uses listed in the statute. Uh, there's retail slash service, office, apartment houses, and then this other category, certain types of industrial uses. Um, the, the statute lists what some of them are. I should also say print shops are, is, a, is, is a use permitted as of right. Examples given of the type of light industrial uses that are encouraged in this um, uh, zone are carpenters, cabinet makers, tinsmiths, plumbers, steam fitters, um, that sort of, they, they use the word manufacturing, light manufacturing. The future zoning for the site will be MX3. The type of development that's proposed um, would be permitted as of right in MX3 with some aspects of it perhaps requiring a special use permit. Uh, the retail would. Uh, but other things that will be uh, permitted under MX3 include warehousing, multifamily, industrial, manufacturing general with a special permit, manufacturing artisan without. The um, proposed development, I'm gonna point to the drawings here. This is, this elevation shows you what would be constructed, your point of view from Salina Street. And you see the building um, in the, in the drawing here located to the right, that would be a five-story mixed-use development. Um, the, that building would have residential on the upper floors, offices on the second floor, retail on the ground floor. 
as you look to the right of the elevation, um, that building is uh, on, the, on the north and east portion of the property, uh, or wing of the, the buildings are connected, so I'm calling them uh, wings of the building. And that would house off offices, offices for three primary tenants, and the fourth tenant has yet to be identified. Um, it, it's the, the space is divided up in that way. The primary tenant, which is in need of the interpretation here today, is a dental laboratory. We submitted in your packet behind the, uh, the August 19th letter, there's, there's also a supplemental letter in there that, that describes in great detail what is done and what kind of equipment is used in a dental laboratory. But the takeaway from it is we're talking about precision, precision drills that are used to make crowns and dentures. Um, that we're talking about very small sort of uh, baking devices. Um, it's a precision. It's a very, it's a very technical precision um, industry. Which 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 if you if you looked at it, it's a lot of people typing at computers. Um, this is not this is not a factory that gets semi trucks making deliveries that has HVAC systems that vent heat or odor or noise. This is in every way that if you went and observed it appears to be an office use. There are people sitting at desks um, modeling you know, modeling this information that they receive from dental professionals and then making these precision pieces of uh, uh, dental equipment that would be crowns or dentures installed um, in, in, a, in, a, in a person's mouth. So the, the reason that I, we provide all that detail is to emphasize, going back to the purpose of the code, this is not an obnoxious, deleterious, um, hazardous, or a nuisance type use. From the outside, there will be no sound. There will be no odor. There will be no um, uh, semi-trucks making deliveries. They receive the information that they need, the molds and the models that they need from FedEx and UPS, the same as you would at your home or at your office. Um, this is the type of use that is, I, I think, ideally contemplated for a mixed-use type zone like this. Now our problem is that a dental laboratory did not exist when this section of the code was written. Tinsmith did, but a dental laboratory did not. A print shop did, but a dental laboratory did not. And I think the analogy was used um, by, by planning and then also by us at, at the last meeting that really what this is most akin to is like a 3D printing operation um, in the sense that it is, it, is a, it, is, it is not so much like building a Chevy. It's, it's a lot like um, uh, that sort of high-tech precision, technological, small object, not an assembly line, that, that, is, that is crafted by a professional using the information provided by a dentist. Um, so for that reason, we're asking for an interpretation today stating that that use would be considered an office use under the zoning. And there was quite a bit of debate at the last meeting, and I've reflected on that, and, and I wanted to just give a couple additional Observations. I think the point was made that, well, anytime you change something, you're manufacturing it. Well, I would disagree with that. There is not a definition of manufacturing in the code. There is this definition for office building, a building that is divided into offices, either single or suites, for the transaction of business other than for mercantile, I mean retail, and manufacturing purposes. So that word manufacturing is th thrown out there, but it's not defined, where the, mer where the merchandise is on sale or for display. So it contemplates a, pro the next sentence is offices used for professional business and whole and part, part will be classified as an office building. So this is certainly a professional business. It's um, certainly not retail. And I, I, would, I would say that it's not really what the code intended manufacturing to be. And, and I wouldn't say that the code is defective because it doesn't it d define that in pre precisely. I think the reason that it doesn't is because they want to give you the flexibility. That's the reason they created a, a Board of Zoning Appeals to be able to make that determination. Now, ambiguity generally should be resolved in favor of a property owner. Um, it, this, I'm citing a case called Hogg from 1998 from the Court of Appeals, but this goes back to the very beginning of zoning in the state of New York. It says, since the ordinance does not define um, or arrange or design any ambiguity in the language of the zoning ordinance must be resolved in favor of the property owner. So you've heard that over and over again, that ambiguity because zoning is in derogation of the common law, something you'd be otherwise able to do use your land as you please, but for the fact that there's a zoning ordinance, zoning boards should um, resolve ambiguities in favor of the property owner. Why? 
Well, I quoted in my original letter the People v. Kerner case, and it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. It's a 1925 case from the Donna zoning, but if you look in the Department of State um, uh, training materials, when, when, you go to the, when you go to get your initial credits for the Zoning Board of Appeals, this is the first case they cite, the very first case. And I, I'm, I'm going to read a brief quote. I'm not going to read you any more legal quotes, but just a brief quote. It says, the creation of a Board of Appeals with discretionary powers to meet specific cases of hardship or specific instances mm -hmm. of improper classification is not to destroy zoning as a policy, but to save it. The property of citizens cannot and ought not be placed within a straitjacket. Not only may there be a grievous injury caused by the immediate act of zoning, but time itself works changes which require adjustment. What might be reasonable today may not be reasonable tomorrow. So the takeaway from Kerner is the world changes. In 1919, they did not have the technology to build precision crowns and this kind of dent dental work. And given the context of the purpose stated for the zoning, given the examples of the other kinds of things which are far more intensive um, uses, you know, I, I, carpenters, cabinet makers, tinsmiths, plumbers, steam fitters, than, than what we're talking about with people sitting behind desks with dental drills and computers, um, I, think, uh, you know, I think it's within your discretion to find this to be an office use. Um, Brody, can I just interrupt for sure. one second? I I think that you mean, um, and I'm not trying to make the argument for you, but um, that this is akin to an industry listed here, not an office, because clearly it's not an office. And I believe your original, uh, your original request was for an office, and we did talk about that. So I think um, it's a printer and a it's and it's. it's you are trying to make the argument that is akin to one of the industries that is specifically enumerated, not an office. Substantially similar, I think, is an argument. Yeah, yeah. well, both, all of the above, I guess. The, so in, in my letter, I, I sort of gave alternatives, like proper uh, possible outcomes. So one would be um, office. And I understand, it, I understand your point about that. It is preferable to us because the office if the board were to, f to find that it was an office use, then that wouldn't limit the number of people that we could hire, um, which would be preferable to the property owner. It, yeah. But understand yeah. that this interpretation yeah. is not specific to this property. Understood. This is yeah. going to be an interpretation that is filed with the Business Class A zoning district from here on out. Yeah. So. And that's a fair point. To categorize a dental, I'm just trying to make sure that you um, are clarifying to the board exactly what you're asking, and I'm, I'm I think it's that we're not it's being a, asked to give a variance. We're being asked to give a new interpretation. Right. right. So, but so I'm I, trying to clarify between yeah. the office and the industries that are specifically enumerated, which is the argument that is before you. So I just wanted you to clarify that. So I, I, you know, I, I agree with what, what Heather's saying in the sense that um, there's two possible outcomes, and I, and I think what I'm hearing is that uh, the second outcome, which which is the industry, akin to the industries, like like you pointed out, is another possible outcome. Um, we're asking for an interpretation that it would be under either of those categories. Our preference, like I said, is for it to be office because there's also this sort of problematic language in the in the list of industries where they limit the number of employees you have and our point is to give is to provide employment um, so if if an interpretation could be given to alleviate that requirement and also call it uh, you know a, a, a certain industry uh, allowed under commercial local local business district a uh, that would be just as good um, it, but we need some relief from from that upper limit I don't I think our interpretation is going to involve designating how many people can work there, is it? He's asking for that designation to be removed, not, oh, not added. Oh, so, so it would be up to them. Okay. Yeah. So the ordinance is very specific with respect to what is enumerated as far as an industry. Also comma, it says, it lists those different industries, but the argument is trying to be made that the dental laboratory is akin and similar to the right. industry. That I understand, yeah. Provided that 
Not more than five manufacturing operators are engaged in the manufacturing of the pro product produced therein. That's what Brody's talking about. And the argument I think you were making last time was that at any given moment there will not be more than five. But well, uh, it, yeah, it, it, and I want to be honest, I want to be direct and honest with this board. Um, it, it's a bit ambiguous how you define a manufacturing operator. There'll certainly be more than five people working there at a time. There'll be people time. behind desks, there'll be people clicking on computers, you know, uh, if... Will there be more than five doing manufacturing? Eventually, we'd like to have more than that, to be honest. And under, under MX3, you know, we, we would be able to. Um, the, we'll do what we have to do, you know what I mean? But the, but the uh, no, the plan, the plan is, is eventually to employ as many people as possible. This is a business where people can have um, high paying jobs um, that aren't necessarily, uh, have a bachelor's degree, the people you train people from the neighborhood. It's, it's an excellent fit for this site. And I, I think that it is a low intensity use. And I understand you know, the arguments that have been made against it. And reasonable people can disagree on those. But I do think this is a great opportunity for the board to make, a ra I think, a rational interpretation that is within your discretion to do to allow this type of use um, where there's just no. No, no negative impacts to, to the neighborhood that would result from it. And then the other piece of it, too, is um, those other uses, we've provided some additional drawings. Um, I, I think we're okay that the other uses are off, uh, office. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. If yeah. you could confirm yeah. and verify what you submitted and tell the board of that, even though sure. it is, we did, uh, we were able to put it in the agenda, um, but if you could outline that, I think that would be very helpful. Yeah, and I have the new drawings up here. Um, Just a question, I guess, then for staff. If the restriction is five, any relief from that restriction would be a use variance? We just reinterpret it and say no restriction. You can um, consider Brody's argument about ambiguity. Uh, you can take that into uh, your consideration, and if you agree with that, is it the number of people physically working on the manufacturing or does it include people sitting behind the desk who may be secretaries and so you can take that into effect and you are correct it would um it would it would um i would it doesn't seem clear as clear as most use variances that the type that we see but it's certainly closer to a use variance than an area variance i guess i guess my question is driving to the point that I think the interpretation around the substantially similar use is one thing that yes. there is a uh, question regarding the number of people performing a substantially similar light industrial use um, that you know is ambiguous and I wouldn't want to burden the ordinance with an interpretation of something to the number of people doing it across this but perhaps a use variance then for this specific case and this specific site gets to the need I, I'm, I'm, I'm for asking greater, for a greater for number guidance. of people is yeah and that that's um, a, a good a nuanced way to see it is that um, you don't necessarily want to put a blanket um, without clearly define anyway. it without having a clear definition going forward as to who counts as the manu the person well, this working might on be a two-step process where we come up with a new interpretation that is conservative, and then do a use variance specific to this project that involves the number of employees, let's say? It could, although if you want to speak uh, more to how you think, you can certainly make your argument as to who counts as a manufacturer in this definite, in, in this circumstance, if you feel that you are below the number um, under your definition, you can, you can, the board can consider that, although they may not agree. But <laughs> again, this the 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 number of employees just happens to be at this particular site, and that is your desire to have that number of employees, which to Nora's point is separate from is this use akin and similar to the industries that are specifically enumerated. So, um, But to, Mike, to Mike's point, if we want to uh, deliberate on the number of manufacturing employees, 
could that be in our decision today, or are we going to say um, apply for the number of employees you want, and we'll you'll, you'll get a variance for that? Well, I think I'd let uh, Mr. Smith continue his argument about the uh, what he spoke about earlier, and um, okay. See what so the I've, I've put up the floor plan for you. Uh, th this this way you can see what the um, property is going to look like. This is this is the building facing Salina Street, the five story building. This is this is the section of the building that um, is on the north and east portion of the property. This square here you see is green space, green space, you know, landscaping. So the the building in question is divided um, really into one, two, three, four, five sections. Uh, the dental use will be here. Um, that, that's where their offices will be, conference rooms, you know, kitchen, that, that kind of thing, storage closets. Um, there will be a industrial supply business which will have their offices here and a little bit of storage. And there'll be a contractor that will have his offices here and a little bit of storage. This space is for an office tenant that has not yet been identified. We don't, we don't have a tenant for that, but we've provided like a generic floor plan of what the office space would look like and we'll seek a tenant. I'm sorry, I can't see that. It would be helpful for me if I could. Could you just push it back in the pole a little bit? Sure. So uh, again, uh, uh, yet to office space without a, a specified tenant, dental, um, this is the industrial supply business office, this is the contractor's office. Yeah. One of the questions we had last time was how much space would be warehouse, you are indicating it would be a very small percentage. Could you indicate on the plans where warehouse space yeah. would be? There, there's no warehouse space. There's a storage closet here, and then some of this in the industrial supply area, they'll, be, they'll store some equipment temporarily as they go in and out, but they'll be there. Those are estimators and people who... So the only areas in the buildings? Right. That's right. And I mean, there'll be storage, like office storage closets in the dental facility and that sort of thing, but not, not like, a, like you'd think of like a warehouse with racks and that kind of thing. The, the, there's going to be a contractor. Where would that storage be? Offsite. Sorry? Offsite. 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 Yeah. The industrial supply company. You know, I think we said before they'll they'll have occasion to bring th some things back with them at the end of the day and, and, and keep them there. So to be clear for that, that will you know they'll have, you know, you know cables or pieces of equipment like handheld pieces of equipment that kind of stuff that they'll they'll carry in and then take back out, but not it won't be a warehouse in the sense, in that sense. Brody, do you have the eighth? 310.1 plan in, in that size because that is more detailed that would be helpful uh, no I don't I don't I didn't I didn't put that one up on the board I'm sorry because that shows that's the one you submitted to provide the illustration that they right. are indeed specifically offices right. so um, it, it's very small but it is on your agenda on page 36 what Lisa was referencing so, um, Cause I, could you reiterate the organization of the spaces? Because I, I don't know that the floor plan, the detailed floor plan, matches what you just described up there. So this is the dental. Is that oh, what okay. you're referring to right here? All right. Yep. That's the dental. Yeah. And what yeah. else did you have yet? This is a tenant yet to be identified. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is ESC right here. And this is JHP right okay. here. Yeah. And JHP is industrial supply. ESC is the contractor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, again, um, I don't want to repeat, so I'll make sure I. The yeah, I, I statute. The statute says that, uh, and, and just to clear one thing up, it doesn't say light industry. There's sort of certain industries. There's a bit of ambiguity. This isn't necessarily modifying. If you make a decision here, it's not modifying your light industry districts. It says it's it's very specific. It, it, it the language that they use is certain certain industrial uses, and then as you go into the statute, then they start listing things. And it, it's a, I think it's you're talking about the office. Of office problem. Right. Yeah, and so our, again, our preference is for, for it all to be considered office, 
but I understand objections to that. Um, an alternative, rather than just denying it all together, would be to find that this is a certain industry which is permitted as of right within, within the uh, district. The challenge to that is it says, provided that not more than five manufacturing operators are engaged in the manufacturing of the product produced therein. Um, you know, our, uh, we, we would request I mean, what we would do then is is we, we would define you know we'd have to we'd have to come up with you know what a manufacturing operator is you know in the context of this sort of you know uh, business. I would argue that somebody sitting in front of a computer is not a manufacturing operator. That somebody answering the phone is not a manufacturing operator. That somebody who's serving a, you know an executive role or a, a secretary is not a manufacturing operator. And that only you know people that are actually engaged in you know, the operation of 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 tools um, would be, and that we could we could have more than five people work there. We want to have significantly more than five people work there. Our plan is to have you know on the order of forty people work there. So, the um, uh, that you know that that would be that would be a difficulty, which is why our preference would be f to find that it's an off uh, an office. I do think this board could interpret that um, you know that the uh, any relief. Uh, from from the five person uh, limit is uh, an area variance. I understand the arguments that it's that it would be more like a use variance, but if if uh, I think the argument as to why that could be treated as an area variance is it deals with intensity and scale, not so much use. It's not saying you know we're a tinsmith or we're a steam fitter. It's it's how. It's 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 a, it's a it's a it's a scaling issue, and mu much like a bulk requirement, you know, do I need a five foot or a ten foot uh, side yard variance? It's more like that, in that it's a scaling issue more than a use issue. I would argue, um, but I understand the arguments of the country. I don't. I have trouble seeing yeah. how that would work, Staff. What? Yeah, what's we, don't, your... we don't do area variances for people. So. Yeah. Um, This was not a specific request on the outset. And so right. we did just find out about the number of people at the last meeting that this particular use or company was intending to employ. Um, I'm wondering if in their deliberation, and I'll have my attorney chime in, if the board can, if they do determine that this dental laboratory manufacturing use is akin to the other industries permitted, that they could also uh, deliberate on the definition, if you will, of manufacturing operators and that they are or are not separate from the other employees that may work in an establishment of of an industry that is permitted I'm just throwing that out there and I will let Catherine uh, respond I, I think that that sums up pretty articulately what the issue is that you will need to make that distinction and you should you can define um, that um, in your deliberations, but as to the issue of whether it is an area variance or a use variance, I don't think that's as critical right now uh, um, for the interpretation because if it's useful, I've um, we can make that determination. I can provide you um, with a memorandum. Um, I've always learned that an area variance speaks to the physical properties of um, of an area, uh, so. But I can research. I haven't come across this issue, so I can certainly research it more and prepare you a memo. And if you are correct, we you, we could submit it as a use variance. But if the law tends to favor an area variance, it's all about how you'll tailor your application. But um, that so I think that's a a future issue. And right now, uh, the two issues as to whether this is akin to the manufacturing enumerated right now in um, the zoning and how we define a manufacturing operator are the two main issues. Or, or if it's an office. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think that's the end of my presentation. I'm open for questions, if there are any questions about. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Is there anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the application? Is there anybody who wishes to speak against the application? Hearing none, we'll move on to our next case. Okay, our next public hearing is for V1924. It's an appeal of a screening device waiver denial at 525 Carbon Street um, to install a 10 foot high stockade fence. The applicant owner is Eric and Christina Chapman and the zoning district is residential class A. I'm Christina Chapman. I represent my husband. <clears throat> we live at 525 Carbon Street in Syracuse. Um, I think you have some pictures that I've submitted about, we've been in this house since 96 and it used to be a really big three-story house right next door to my house. My house the is- the microphone, line up with the microphone. Better. Down, there we go. <laughs> is that better? Sorry. Um, and my house is a small one-story house and this house was three stories. They removed this house, they demolished it last summer, 2018. And when we did, like, I don't know if you're familiar with Carbon Street on the north side of the city, but we're at the top of the hill. And it's like my house was built into the side of the hill because the back of my house, my backyard, is much higher than the street and my house. It kind of slopes down towards the house. So I gave pictures to demonstrate. We put the six foot fence up and it allowed no privacy whatsoever to the backyard. Now, I brought another one. I'm not sure if you have the same one that I have, but I think you do already. In the packet, it's about 64, where the picture's 65, where the pictures begin. Um, I got a two. The top is the one, and then the bottom shows the demolition process. That's the one, and this is the six foot high fence. You can see the house across the street. And they rehab the houses across the street, so there's a lot of people that live there now. And the big one next to the big three-story house across the street, too, is rented, I believe, to, he said he was renting to 20 Somalians at this point in time, and it's, there's a lot of people there. So it, we, we started with the six-foot fence, and we did the, the one by 10 by eight pine boards on top just until we got to the point when we had some privacy in the backyard, and we stopped. The 10 foot section of the fence runs along the driveway where the house used to be. In the back, it drops down to seven and then six. It's not 10 foot all the way to the back. It's only in the driveway where there's, where at the lowest point in the yard. Because, and it's simply because the backyard is so much higher than the house and the street. And I'm asking to be allowed to keep that. It's been up since the house went down. So, um, were, How did you get, were you, were you um, asked to come in and speak? Or did you, you make an application? Uh, or you did it first and asked permission afterwards, right? We hadn't realized, because we had never done this before, we didn't realize we needed a permit. And then we got uh, a, a letter in the mail saying we have to apply for a permit. We were originally died, denied for the regular permit because the fence is so tall, so we had to submit the application to the zoning board and that appeal was denied. And so they said I had to come here and, and submit my appeal. So I, I, you know, I read the case and I read your you know, personal circumstances and you're saying that the 10 foot part keeps you from looking at the empty space. Is, is that the case? No, in, there's a lot of traffic on the street. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of activity there's police on my street all the time and walking by the house if you see the one before with just a six-foot fence up people just walking on the street were looking completely in the backyard and people are kind of really nosy in the neighborhood and everybody's like everywhere so it's simply giving us privacy not so much from us for us looking out for people looking in and scoping out the place Quite frankly, the, my neighbors next door had their house broken into. They have a standard six foot high fence and they 
jumped the fence and went in the back of the back window of the house. If I understand, you own part of it land next to your house, right? Yes, we, we're purchasing half the lot, which is going through now. We've already paid for it. They're just modifying the deed right now. So we actually, it's not on the property line. It's on the edge of the driveway where the old house used to be. Consider planting tall trees or something as screening in that area? Um, we prefer not to just because it takes, number one, it takes a long time for them to grow, but it also is a lot more vegetation that we have to maintain. And as far as... What are you planning on doing with that thing? We will eventually fence off the new section of it, but that's going to be a standard six-foot fence and we'll apply for the appropriate permits. This fence will stay. This is just simply, again, for the privacy to the backyard from the street, just because, again, it's the height of the backyard to the street and across the street. So, so you will be eventually moving the fence to enclose the whole new property? No. We're, we're going to have a fence run to, to fence off the, the new section of property in the back. You know, per regulations, that's going to be standard, six foot high, no problem. This fence, we would like to stay just as it is. And again, it's because go for, going further out to fence off, and that's just for security, that portion. This part is more for the privacy. Do you have a burglar alarm in your house now? No. But my husband's a disabled vet with PTSD, and he's got severe hypervigilance, and he's always on guard. And to be extra protective, he can't help that. And I believe I submitted a letter from his therapist that it's been really hard on him. It's been a really stressful situation just trying to get everything, you know, so we have some peace of mind, too. The staff, if she puts a six normal height fence, six foot height fence on her new property perimeter, would she be allowed to keep this tall fence inside her land, or does that still be out of? I don't know where the other fence is going to go. Uh, I denied this request. I see that. She's appealing yeah. to you yeah. to overturn my decision to have something that's higher than is allowed. I guess so. is, is so. I guess I'm wondering if your question is. Once the resubdivision goes through, and, it's fence. and the, the would the existing fence. fence that would now be wholly within her property even be subject to a permit? Or well, you need a permit to put up a fence, absolutely. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know where your new fence is going. I don't have a. No, permit. no, we're not talking about the new fence. No, the existing fence would be wholly within her parcel. If the fence is within a fence, can it be higher than what code allows? I bet the answer is no. That's a question. No. You just said no. no, no. You need a permit for any kind of thing. The regulations remain. Still stand. Anything else? Any other questions? Thank you very much. Is there anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the application? Is there anybody who wishes to speak against the application? Hearing none, we'll get to our next case, which could be our last case. And then we'll talk about this again later. Can I ask this will come back and we'll hear my We're going to deliberate on this yeah. right after we finish the, our last case. Okay. We take each case at a time. We talk amongst ourselves. Okay. And make a decision. So you're welcome to stay. You don't have to do whatever you like to do. Okay. It's a public hearing, so you will hear our deliberations. You can't, you can't, um, comment. You can't comment on them, but, but you, you have the right to listen to them. Another case. Okay, our third and final uh, public hearing this afternoon is for V1926. It's a use variance uh, at 917 Burnett Avenue to establish a five family dwelling owned um, by the Greatest Syracuse Property Development Corporation. The applicant is Kelly Dove. The zoning district is residential class A1.
Good afternoon. I'm Terry Luckett from the Syracuse Land Bank at 431 East Fayette Street. 1917 Burnett Ave is a five unit apartment building located within a residential Class A zoning district. According to assessment records, the building was constructed in 1961 as a five family on a previously vacant lot. It's been vacant for longer, t longer than two years and has lost its non-conforming use status. It was subsequently seized by the city of Syracuse for tax default and turned over to the land bank in November 2018. I'm here today to ask the board for a use variance to allow the property to operate as it's currently configured. Without a variance, we do not believe that we'll be able to sell the property and return it to productive use. Our only alternative would be to demolish the building. And I go through the standards of proof. Number one, reasonable return. The land bank's strategy for this property is to sell it to a private investor who will renovate it and return it to productive use. We've received an offer from Kelly Dove, an investor located in North Syracuse. She's willing to purchase the property for $75,000 and to invest an additional $127,000 for renovation. Ms. Dove's purchase offer is contingent on the receipt of a use variance to maintain the five units. In your packet, we provo uh, provided the operating pro formas for re renovating the five units and for reconfiguring the building as a single family and then for reconfiguring the building as a two family. The return on investment for a five family unit yields a reasonable return with a cap rate of 6.77%, capitalization rate, sorry. The capitalization rate for a single family drops to 2.5%. Cap rate for conversion to a two family is 3.67%. Anything under 5% is not considered viable investment. We feel that maintaining the property as a five family is the only financially viable scenario under which an investor will purchase and renovate the property. Number two, unique circumstances. This building presents an unusual circumstance that differs from other properties on the street. The existing building is 4,392 square feet, over three times the size of a typical single family home on that street. It's almost two times the size of a typical two family home. If converted to either a single family or a two family, it would be outsized compared to neighboring homes. Essential character of the locality. The approval of this variance will not change the essential character of the neighborhood. Burnett Ave, while zoned RA, is made up of a mix of single families, two families, and three family dwellings, and two other apartment buildings. Under rezone Syracuse, this property will be zoned MX1, which will allow for a range of residential and non-residential uses, and the density requirements in MX1 are $1,000 1000 square feet per unit, and that's within the minimal minimum allowable in the zone, excuse me. Allowing the variance will ensure that the property can be sold and redeveloped and will remove the blight from the neighborhood. Finally, the hardship is not self-created. This property was abandoned by the former property owner and fell into tax delinquency. The loss of the non-conforming use status was not a result of the actions of the city of Syracuse the land bank, or any other potential purchaser. Thank you. Uh, we have a letter from the property owner behind the property. He says the hillside at the back is falling down and his fence is falling down with it. Are you aware of that? I was not aware of that. They didn't, they didn't send that letter to us, as far as I know. It, it just showed up here today. Maybe it just arrived today. Um, you, are you going to give her a copy? Yeah. Okay. I guess it's a question for staff. The bulk of the content of the correspondence is regarding um, items that would be covered during some sort of site plan review. 
there would be no there'd be no site plan review unless there was uh exterior alterations they were putting new siding on or it's a brick building i don't i don't think she's planning on new siding does the live there you think because according to something here she checked like she will be it will be owner occupied is that her <coughs> no i don't i didn't remember that but her application is there and if that's what she checked that's what that's what she plans I mean, this is a, this is an apartment building it's not right it's not like it's a five unit apartment it's, yeah it's, it's a built that way right right exactly it's not it's not a large house that was converted to five units no, big rectangular five unit building. It was built in 1960 when it was zoned commercial at the time. It wasn't allowed use when it was built. Was that, Nora? It wasn't allowed use when it was built. No. So I, I assume in setting up the parking at the area, at the back, you would set up the, the hillside so it's not careening down? She's going to have to do that. We'll take a look at that. Yes, we do. We we have a renovation mortgage on the property. Although I don't believe that repair of the uh, retaining walls was in that um, in our original spec because we weren't aware of it. We'll have to go back and take a look at that. Other questions? Thank you, Terry. Very much. Thank you. Anybody here wish to speak in favor of the app? Anybody here wish to speak against the app? My name is Mary Bingham. I live at 1911 Burnett Ave, which is right next door to the apartment building. We own a two-family house. We've lived there for 34 years. Um, so we know the neighborhood. It is a five-unit apartment building, and it's been empty at least six years, if not more. Um, it is a brick building, it has siding on part of it. And the whole back, the parking lot surrounds the building. There is no yard to speak of. And it is brick surrounding, supporting the parking lot. That has fallen, it's caved in in the back. And I've lost probably Two, three feet of my backyard it hasn't been maintained at all in the land bank scope of work this isn't even addressed at all it's not part of their scope of work or as far as parking I don't know what they're gonna do I mean it is a busy, busy area you know you park alternately on the street yeah, for 34 years we've parked across the street. I don't know the city and the county go back and forth who owns the land. We maintain the land over there. I don't, I'm not sure if the city or the county cuts the grass for us. Um, but it's, it's just a mixture of there's two single families and the rest are two families on our block. So let, me, let me ask you, uh -huh. um, are you, is your preference that for it not to be there anymore, is your first choice for it to be demolished? And have yes. Nothing, nothing there? Yes. <laughs> it, um, we've been there since the original owner has owned the property. And he's the only one in the history of the building who has actually been there, maintained the property, had good tenants. You say that um, the, the the land bank hasn't provided for everything that needs to be done. If, if it were added, would it be at least better for you? Yeah, it, it would be a lot better. As far as the parking, I mean, I don't know how they would fit the number of cars needed per tenant. I don't know if, I believe it's just one parking space required per resident. 
Yes. Sorry. Don't. They would need five. They would need five. I don't. I'm not sure if you could fit five cars, but I mean, if they could. It, it appears from their plan that they could. It, they, it's the they minimum would, requirements. They would definitely have to fix the wall to get in the back. So again, back to, to uh, Stu's question. If, if they were to reestablish the retaining walls, would you still prefer to have it demolished or not? If it was demolished, <laughs> I'd be very happy because it did become a drug house in between owners, and um, that's what has brought us here. To you go back what thirty four years? What, what was it like when it was full as an apartment? The man who owned the the original landlord who owned the building owned it from the time it was built so when we bought our home you know there was no problems at all he was constantly there maintaining it you know checking on his tenants so what happened to him did he die he sold the building to the second man who yeah and, and what and was like that what was that like with the second owner then First of all, we didn't even know who he was. He never introduced himself, and no one was over there at all, ever, making sure the garbage went out, maintaining the property. It was, it was really awful. It was awful. I called the cops all the time because of the noise, the commotions. They started selling drugs outside in the parking lot. It was really really awful just terrible yeah I would I mean it's understandable uh, any any other questions any other comments I just most of the people on our block they have just sold they've lived in their homes as long as we have you know even if it was two family home they were a resident in that home so I realize the neighborhoods change and whatever, but we have a good group now. Everybody maintains their property. And if you did get rid of the building, I'd be more than happy to buy the land and incorporate it and pay my taxes. I, but if they, can main, if they can fix the wall, that would be a good step and just maintain the property. Thank you for listening to me Thank today. You. I appreciate Anybody else wish to speak against the application? Uh, if not, I, I invite Vlog to come back and respond if you like. I'd like to assure the board that the land bank vets its buyers. Uh, we check that they don't have any code violations on any other properties that they own. We check that they are tax current. Uh, Ms. Dove, although I didn't remember that from the application, has indicated she's going to live in the property. She will be there and maintain it. We will uh, take a look at this re retaining wall and make sure that uh, if the spec needs to be modified, we'll modify the spec. Maybe Ms. Dove will say that uh, the price of that is not realistic for her and she'll drop out. We'll put it on the market again with a revised spec. Um, there's enough space in the backyard for five cars to park, so I don't. I don't think that's going to be an issue. I yeah, said that, that they were not happy about the cars parking in the back, but if it's a legal use, that's that's great. That parking in the front is going to be removed. That'll be grass in the front, so that'll look a look, look nicer out there. So they just would be back, uh, parking in the back. In the backyard. Yeah. Very. I think I saw in the packet somewhere that. Um, Ms. Dove is a, she owns other uh, income producing properties. Do you yes. Some background, like a, a number of them or a couple, or do you, do you know? Like, I'm sure I wish I had that for you. I, I did not vet that application, so I, I can get you a letter and tell you how many if, if you need to know. So, 
but any that she owns, we do check and make sure that everything's, uh, that there's no open code violations. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, we're finished with our cases. We have no new business. Uh, we'll deliberate on our cases. First case, uh, I-1925, the continuation, uh, the new multi-use complex on uh, I'd make a motion that we uh, provide a, an interpretation that allows essentially what is proposed at the site. I think it's something that we should be careful to word and perhaps vote on at the next meeting because we want to get we want to get it right uh, so uh, something that would say either that it's considered office space which I don't like so much or include dental manufacturing as one of the categories that's allowed in uh, inter an interpretation that says dental manufacturing is similar enough to the other you could lay that out now in a couple of sentences I, I wouldn't. I'd be we uncomfortable can, approving something today. Yeah, okay. okay. We can um, draft some for us. Well, how about this? Uh, Could we have a discussion about? Absolutely. I can. Yeah. We can. Catherine and I can help word it so that you're comfortable with the motion. Okay. Um, so if we second the motion and then we can have discussion. Sure. Okay. I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. A discussion. I, I, I kind of like the option, the second option that Mike outlined, and we try to list it as one of the enumerated. I think that's easy, the path of least resistance, I think. And, it's, and see what they, what they want to say, uh, whether we want to include in that something about the number of manufacturing employees. We're, we're going from five to over 40. That's a big jump. Well, I think part of what we have to deliberate here is whether or not 40 people working in a facility like that are actually manufacturing operators, which I would argue the definition of a manufacturing operator would be someone engaged in the manufacturing that we are now defining to include potentially dental implements. Actually making the product as right. opposed to somebody who's behind a computer. Right. Reception, et cetera. Yeah. Then the question is where do we stop interpreting what's there and start writing something new? with new definitions and so forth. I mean, so, I guess staff has never had to define manufacturing operators. Right. So in your deliberation, you could say something to the effect of, and I'm always going to say, I'll let my lawyer jump in, um, that this board finds that the proposed use of the dental laboratory is, it is similar and yeah, akin right. to the industries permitted by right within a business class A zoning district and further that the manufacturing operators, um, well, let me get the exact wording, hold on a second, or let me see what it is, uh, further that the manufacturing operators shall be those that are engaged in the, in the specific manufacturing of the product they're in something like that because yeah, this is going to apply to those other industries as well I that mean, are that's literally mind. what it says here five manufacturing operators are engaged in the manufacturing of the product produced therein so i don't know that we even you, need to. well you could reiterate that yeah. reiterate that and and that or exclude and that they are not right. they will not be those that are clerical in nature in the in the well, I mean, yeah either it, it, yeah. 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 Um, administrative I, or di not directly involved in the actual yes and making I would of the product I would add that in today's day there there may be uh, people who are directly involved say working on the computer who are coming up with the designs that aren't actually on the factory floor if you will so there is some confusion there um, so if you want to specifically distinguish between people who are doing clerical unrelated marketing something something like that and those who are directly involved in manufacturing so products. I think I don't know that we want to define clerical I think we would rather clearly define the yeah. folks yeah. manufacturing yeah. the operation rather than get into other definitions and, and you know let's remember that 
when this ordinance was written, there were no computers. Um, you know, there might have been somebody with a green eye shade and, and a paper and a pen. But even if they are designing or, you know, to, 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 make, to make this thing, I, I don't know how, how they make it, but a person, right, maybe on a, a program that simulates or shows what it is, and that's still not ma making the product. Right, that's correct. You know, so making the product is dealing with something that creates the slightest bit of dust, yep. or you know they have to touch the product to mold it or something like that. So I believe Mr. Smith was telling us that there could be more than five people actually working on the project with machinery. And that, that well, that is, that is for this specific instance but what you're doing is looking at the overall business class a zoning district um, so I think uh, Nora to your point that you're eliminating rather than including is um, a, a better way to interpret this if you will. let me ask something else uh, I heard it twice on two different cases today under the new zoning dot 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 uh, is our interpretation going to carry over to the new zoning, or just is, is this just until the, uh, it's passed? Well, we have to wait until the new zoning ordinance is passed and see what the specifics are in the zoning district that's proposed here, and if that map is essentially adopted. So I would not try to uh, anticipate what's going to happen next. Okay. Exactly. For now, this will run with the existing ordinance in the business class A district regulations. And all, Citywide. All, all we're doing to the business class A is adding dental. That's, I mean, you're that's, adding that's another use I that mean, is a canon yeah. similar to, and you're also uh, deliberating on the manufacturing operator uh, issue. Could Maybe Katie could come up with some language that defines the manufacturing operator, and we could move on to the other two and get this. So um, today, suggest uh, relating the manufacturing operator as somebody who is directly engaged in the physical act of manufacturing the product. Great. If you're okay with something like that, yep. that works. For yeah, me. that's fine. And just to be sure, dental manufacturing is the only issue that we're Correct. concerned with. Yes. And it's very, sp it's actually narrower than that because they're, they're making certain things like crowns and I forget what else. But well, let's give them the opportunity. They maybe they'll, they maybe they'll branch out to you the, know like the, uh, full blown dentures. You know. the dentures and nothing larger than will fit in your mouth though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Only dental implements. <laughs> um, okay. So what happens next? We can vote on mice, yes. and then you're gonna. Uh, you're going to draft something and we'll... I mean, you're not going to approve the actual resolution until next week, next time anyways, but essentially this is your motion to uh, enable this particular yeah. use to move forward. But the hearing stays closed? Yes. Okay, fine. So uh, Mike's resolution is... Say it again. Do we know what it is? That we craft language that we vote on at the next meeting. Is that next second? Then? Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm, uh, uh, I'm sorry, so we're oh. not voting on the language, we're voting on to vote on the language? We're uh, if voting on to getting something to a writing that we vote on. Yeah, so it's it's our normal, it's really our normal process. Yeah. We vote to approve yeah. Yeah. The, the agenda item and then yeah. you draft the language yeah. and by the time yeah, so we vote on the resolution next month. Be, yeah. yeah. In that sense, right. the caveat uh, that you gave is, is not needed. Um, the, uh, if you're comfortable, just in the same way that if you dispute something that ends up in the resolution because you feel it wasn't a reflection of what you voted on, uh, you don't have to approve those um, resolutions. So essentially, we can draft it, and if you're comfortable with it, it's adapted with the, the next one. It's different because I think in this case, we. Sorry. It has broader implications and than a single state. Exactly. Like, let's call those conditions, you know. Right. Right. So we're approving. We're approving an interpretation. We haven't seen the interpretation. We just made the motion yeah. to allow this very specific request to move forward, including the manufacturing operator to exclude the right. So or other language. So that resolution at the next meeting, just like you do every other right. 
resolution. I see. Adopt. I'm sorry. Adopt. Yeah. Right. In, the, in the link yes. be in that resolution. Yes. Right. That we'll get when we get our packets so that, in the yeah. mail, and so we have time to review it yeah. and then come to the meeting, either prepared to vote on it or not, to approve it or not. Right. 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 Great. So. <laughs> Does that language be uh, developed? Interpretation? <coughs> and that language will include that a dental manufacturer is like and akin to yes, the, exi the existing uses, and that the definition of a manufacturing operator will be clarified to include, That's what I was or not to include, we'll the physical we'll handling be. and operation right. of the pro product. Yes. Great. Okay. What she said. She said, and, okay. and to be clear, uh, you will w that adoption would go into effect when you adopt the resolutions if you are comfortable with the language as it okay or edits that are proposed. Yeah, via maybe you'd send it out in advance. Yes, first to definitely it, it goes, we get it in advance, just pay attention to the package when it comes in. We can, we can try to get it sooner if, if yeah, right. yeah, I, I exactly. think that would be advised. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 B1924, uh, the appeal of the screening device waiver at 525 Carbon Street. Uh, is there a motion? I, I certainly sympathetic to the, you know, the extenuating circumstances of the applicants and her husband. And? And <laughs> I thought we were discussing. No, no, um, we, we can't discuss. <laughs> we have a motion in a second. Mm -hmm. um, so we can make a motion and a second and then discuss and not, and then change up. But the law says. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just a, a, a question for staff. Um, if if we were to approve this, would we have any say in how that um, four foot extension was? Uh, constructed. I mean, it's already constructed. I guess my concern is what I saw from the from the pictures is a little bit of a mishmash of materials used, and some of it was corrugated metal, some of it was wood. Are you uh, essentially asking whether you can condition the approval on a certain action being taken? Uh, yes. Um, in in the action would be, I guess, making the material she said that. consistent. You Unifor can the whole, yeah. You can request uh, reasonable conditions um, on an approval. So yes. Okay. Is there a motion? Um, okay. Uh, I, I, okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve. Um, but with the condition that to overturn the denial, is that what, uh, what the language? That, okay, to overturn the denial, but with the condition that the the there be consistency um, in and um, maybe actually that we get a, can can I go as far as saying that we get a chance to approve the design of the uh, that's consistent with the um, code. One, you want to state your your reasons why you're imposing that condition, and go through the. Um, I, I don't understand. The criteria. Um, sorry. So it'd be this consistent all the way across the same yeah. design instead of. The yeah, if you look at the pictures like this, and, and please, although you're not allowed to comment, but please correct me if I'm wrong. What I see is that you've got part of the this four foot extension that consists of. Uh, you you oh, just that you, and then part of it looks like it's corrugated metal. It looks like a mishmash of kind of materials you, used. And in my mind, if um, if it's going to be constructed, it should be consistent. Um, just are, are, are the aesthetics 
under all yeah that's purview. basically what I'm saying the aesthetics of yeah, it. But yeah it, in a sense you're applying the area variance criteria and in that sense being related to the character of the neighborhood you can make the argument that aesthetics are related I'll also add you can um, after a hearing is closed um, the applicant can't submit new information but you can request new information so if you have questions for the applicant you can ask it she, he can ask he you, you can, can ask, ask you can ask for additional information after a hearing is closed only only the board can do that we have a second yeah, I'll make, I'm going to make the motion to approve with the condition that, um, uh, again, I'm having a little hard time, that aesthetically there's some consistency throughout the full fence on, on what it's constructed. And, and if, if we can, it, it would be better to see um, uh, in advance a design of what would be proposed. Essentially, I'm gonna, I, I would ask that you would take down maybe um, or modify what you've already done there to, to make it I, more consistent. I would suggest the word uniform uniformity there. Okay. Your second. So I'll second. Uh, need I need to go through the. Do I need to go through the? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, will there be a change in neighborhood care? Um, uh, yes, I think there would be in this particular case. A 10-foot fence is not um, what one would typically see um, in a neighborhood where there are fences. Um, are there alternate solutions available so that the variance is not needed? Um, in this particular case, I would say no, there are no alternate solutions because of the topography of the lot. Um, and and what is trying to be achieved here, it, it appears to me the only solution is to construct a taller fence. Um, what is the magnitude of the variance being requested? Um, I would say moderate in that particular neighborhood. I'm not, I'm not sure that a 10-foot fence is, um, given that, again, the topography of the lot, um, it's not 10 feet all the way around. It's 10 feet in certain portions. So I'm not sure that the, uh, I'm not convinced that the, uh, that, that it's a significant magnitude, uh, of si significant magnitude, I should say. Will there be an adverse effect on the surrounding property if this variance is approved? Well, I, I would say no to that because I, I haven't heard that. Nobody was here to speak against it. Um, so I would say no. Um, and is this a self-created difficulty? Uh, I'm going to say no because it's a unique circumstance given the topography of the lot. Well, I would say that there would be no change to the neighborhood because it's already there. The fence well, has been there. <laughs> yeah. They've already, they already changed it. Yeah. Is that the way it really works? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. 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 So anyways, those are my... So, but in your, in your motion... Does that mean we have to see a plan or at least be? I think that would be helpful. So I, I again, I'm, are you saying that I, we can request that? If we give an area variance with a condition, is that then part of the permit review process? It could be, yeah. Oh. You can, yeah. So in that, yeah, so, so in that sense, that would be a condition that the Can permit office is reviewing. I'm allowed to answer okay. a question? Okay. Yes. Uh, did you build it yourself? We might have to build it ourselves. Maybe what we had was just in certain times there was some obstacles in the tree growth from the other lot. Before we could remove it. So we didn't want to have to make it the one that has been 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 the one that next door that lot uh, they could plant arborvitaes which could grow 30 feet tall and, and then yeah, that's although that's we don't know if they're by the lot next door or not I mean I know they indicate that they are but for that land yeah, I purchased the, the oh you own it 16 and a half feet into the other lot we can just split the neighbor so it's in the final stage right now okay. although it's not part of this case so I don't know that we can 
the... So I think that you could plant, if you keep the fence, you could still plant some arborvitaes that would hide the, your 10-foot height. You say that as a suggestion. There's an old that solution that doesn't require a variance. Cover up the by code fence and achieve the same objective. Yeah, that's true. Open uh, either choice. Either well, I, it doesn't. It doesn't have the same immediate impact. Right. So our take a long time. Take a long time to fill in that. So, I guess that's the. Just to know a distinction between an area variance and a use variance is that use variance is, as you know, but for the record, are very strict as to meeting every one of those right. standards. Right. Whereas a area variance is a balancing test, so it depends on how each one of those factors is valued compared to the other in in that specific case. So, well, I, I do think it's a uh, self difficulty because they build it without getting permits. And I think it does detract from the neighborhood. It is, uh, and, and you can't just say it's there already, so it's not going to be bad for the neighborhood. You could build a 10-story building there and say, well, it's already there. But I think that the topography is the... Uh, it's yeah, a challenge. Situation. It's not yeah. very steep. I, I see a lot more houses on much steeper lots than this. I, I, you know, Mike, to your first point, though, that's why I, I'm sympathetic to the, to the applicant um, trying to come up with a happy medium given the situation. But I agree, aesthetically, as it stands now, it's not very pleasing and that's why hence my condition let's try to make it a little more and as they note here it's higher than what would be allowed in an industrial or, or commercial area as well. so so even if properly done if we denied they would just have they would shave off I, you know I don't know if that's how you do it but they could a second? I guess shave this down to six f feet and that wouldn't serve their purposes it would serve the purposes of no. of no yep of what we're deliberating on. Uh, um, so the motion was seconded to approve? Yeah. yeah okay. So are we keeping your yeah. motion? I'm standing with my motion. Okay. All those in favor of uh, approving the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. It passes. It passes. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, V1926, a use variance permitted uses. So you'll, I think you talk, yeah, uh, she understands what she's got to do, or? Uh, B1926, the five family house by the land bank on Burnett. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion we approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay, I think uh, uh, Ms. Luckett has, has demonstrated that the, about the reasonable return that can't be made without approval. Uh, the, the alleged hardship is, is, it, is it unique? Well, it lost the gathering. The required variance if granted will not well for the essential character of the building has been there and they if anything it might be improved because they'll fix the the falling down the parking lot in the rear and put grants in the front and the uh, partnership is not self created it's 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 the uh, I guess the hardship was created by the previous owner who walked away. It's really nice. You want to add a condition that the retaining wall be addressed because it's not in the materials presented here. And like I said, we should include the uh, condition that the retaining wall and the rear of the property be uh, brought up to a, a, an acceptable level for parking and fill. <coughs> Did have to do a seeker on that? Yes. And there, I said there is no, uh, uh, it's a negative seeker. There's been no change to the uh, environment. <clears throat> Discussion. I guess my only, it's a, maybe a question for Catherine, is if it's appropriate to impose a condition that's not the subject of the use variance. So can we say you got to fix the back wall as part of the scope of this? Or can we just say we encourage you greatly with the land bank to work to improve the scope? I guess. In this case, you can. Okay. Because you're looking at, especially with the secret consideration, you're Great. looking at it holistically. Great. And I didn't want to overstep. Uh, and also, I'm thinking um, in 
terms of where the property is, some of like is the retaining wall near where the parking area is? is yeah. That, yeah. At the, the back of the at the back that, of the property. In that sense, with the requirements of having a certain amount of prop uh, parking per dwelling unit, it is related. Great. They would probably would have to do that to create the party for parking spaces. Mm -hmm. Hard mm -hmm. to say, but it looks that way. Okay. And a call question. All those in favor of approving the variance say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, as I said, there's no new business. Is there any the correspondence? Is there anything to discuss on that or? No, we just wanted to uh, bring to your attention that the Common Council did uh, make a secret determination of a positive declaration um, with respect to the new zoning ordinance. So the seeker process is underway and continuing to go through. Um, no authorizations. We, if, if, if none uh, continue, we still may have to come in to vote uh, on the resolutions, or we will have to come in to vote on the resolutions. Can we do that by uh, electronically um, vote, voting on resolutions? Oh, no, or do you send it out and we by email? Are you um, referring to for the first? I'm if, sorry. For, for, for the, there's no, if there are no, no cases, cases in the next case, right? Oh, you know, I, I want to double check that, but I believe. Oh, we've done, we've done that in the past. I think so, but I, I will look into the legality of that because I, uh, I know that there is a specific phrase in our um, ordinance that says that you can't vote um, for on issues where you weren't present for the hearing. So, uh, I, I just wanted pointed that out today. I know we've done <laughs> that in the past just to vote and yeah. Plus, we get our check. Okay. The uh, answer is I believe yes, but if it's no, I will let you know. Okay, thank you. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. I said. <laughs> <laughs>